Welcome to Van Lathan's The Red Pill, where we give you the brutal reality of truth. Today's guest, Nally Manuel. Big deal over at the Hillsong Church, trying to change people's lives every single day by bringing the word of God to them. Uh, brand manager over at Fear of God Clothing with her brother, Jerry Lorenzo, taking the fashion game by storm. She is a wife. She is a healer. She is a creative. And she is with us today uh, on the red pill. Uh, this is one that's spiritual. Natalie has an anointing on her life and a mission to talk to people about their walk in spirituality, their relationship with God, their relationship with the, the better parts of themselves, and how to deal and cope with the worst parts of yourself and how spirituality God connected to people, fellowship and service, help you connect with the parts of yourself um, that bring out the best in you and how it helps you cope with the parts of yourself that might not feed you the way that they should. It was a very, very necessary conversation with me, someone who sometimes struggles uh, to access his spiritual center. Sometimes somebody who feels a little shame in the house of the Lord um, someone who doesn't know how to face God with uh, uh, my back straight. It's even tough for me to talk about now. Um, so Natalie was here, and it actually ended up turning into a de facto therapy session. Because uh, when you're around somebody, whether you believe or not, when you're around someone that really is at peace in their life, I want you, everyone to just take a moment to soak that peace up. When you're around someone who's really found a sense of tranquility and a center to their life, no matter if you believe what they believe or you don't, in this case, me and Natalie happen to share the same beliefs, but take a moment, let that waft over you and really see which parts of that you can use in your own life. That's very, very important. Uh, when, when you say, when they, when everyone likes to joke on the internet and it says, be his peace, be her peace. When you see someone being their own peace, it's okay to steal a little bit. Steal a little bit of that piece, see how they're doing it, put it in your tool bag so that you can um, be a little bit less frenetic in your own life. Natalie also talks about her show now with Natalie. She's getting great guests, man. She's had a bunch of great people. She's getting the best of the best, man. She's getting uh, the, the Haley Baldwin. She's getting, she, I think she had uh, uh, Tyson Chandler was on there. Kelly Rowland was on there. Her brother Jerry Lorenzo was on there. Uh, and the show is doing real well. That's on the Hillsong channel. Um, you can check that out. Uh, we talked a little bit about that. We also talked about her personal walk and how she hasn't always been perfect. And no person is perfect. Everyone is uh, a, a sinner. And how she deals with that in her life and what she wants people to know about God, about Christianity, about spirituality, and about the nature of things that are eternal. It was a great conversation. I'm so glad that Natalie was able to stop by and talk to me. Um, and I hope that you guys get something from it. Listen, if you don't believe in God, I'm not tripping on you. However, challenge yourself a little bit to listen to this podcast and see if there's something in it that resonates with you. Nobody's trying to convert you right now. I'm trying to give you every facet of, 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 of who we are. And on the red pill, your host happens to love him some Jesus. So we are going to reflect that today. It's something we haven't touched on on the podcast yet, and I'm glad Natalie uh, was able to sit down um, and talk to me. By the way, I didn't cry, but I came close. Didn't cry. Also, oh, one more thing. Natalie reveals a deep, dark baseball secret that I didn't know. I didn't know this baseball secret about her and her brother, and I, was, I, I had no clue about this. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Now, um. Before we get to Natalie, I want to tell a personal story, okay? This personal story is sexual in nature. So maybe you might want to skip this and come back uh, when Natalie starts talking, if you're into Christianity. I'm going to give you a second right now to skip it and come back to Natalie. Okay, you're not going to skip it because you want to hear this story. I know how you guys are. You're trying to act like you don't like hearing about sex. You want to hear about sex. Um, there's a bigger point to this story, though. When I was in... I would say my junior year of college, it's around 21 at this point, I met a girl. Met a girl, liked her a lot, right? 
liked her a lot. Now, this was bigger, man, so I had to work really, really hard for the lady. So I wasn't to the point to where, um, you know, I would talk to a girl, holler at her, and in a couple weeks, it would go down. Nah, man, it was like you had to spend, you had to work on that. Had to spend a semester, you know, making food runs, lure her over to the house, watch some movies. Not lure, wrong word, invite her over to the house, watch some movies. You have to put in a lot of work. You know that Bryson Tiller song, Working Overtime? That's what I had to do. I had to work overtime. I had to be that guy in that song. So after about, I would say, a semester, that's conservative, by the way, of working on this one particular young lady, she came over to the house. She came over to the house and it was go time. She was going to get 355 pounds of loving. She was going to understand the sweat of a big man. She was going to, it was going to go down and it did. She had built up a genuine affection for me and we had a, she genuinely liked me. I genuinely liked her. And now we were going to have sex. S E K S sex. It's about to be had. She comes over. I set the mood. Um, actually, I'll tell you the way this happened. Um, she comes over. I didn't set the mood. She tells me, this is a very cute story, by the way. She tells me to go to the store to get her some ice cream. It's literally like 1130 at night. I'm like, go get you some ice cream. She's like, yeah, go to the store, get some ice cream. So I'm like, all right. Like, I don't really want to get up and go get some ice cream right now. It's late, but I'll go. I leave and I go to the store and I get the ice cream. Um, I come back and she's got candles lit up all over the room. Sweet lady. Candles lit up all over the room. She's got candles lit up. She got that Joe playing. Remember that? Sweeter than sugar. You know, y'all know that joint. That whole dog. She had the Joe playing everything. I'm like, yo, it's about to go down. I'm already ready. Because as soon as I saw the candles, I know what time it was, okay? So we get in there. Let's say we start having sex at 12.03 um, after, you know, we finish with the full play or whatever, fellas. You got you to gotta prime things. You can't just go right in there, fellas. You got you to gotta make sure everything's all ready to go. You know, you guys learn that. Learn that. Be attentive in these situations. You can't just go in. But let's say we were starting having sex at 12.00. O'clock. 12.03, I was out of here. Dunzo. Over. I would say, and when I say three minutes, I would say that three minutes is, that's like optimistic as far as what, how long this lasted. I mean, it was boom, boom, done. And I just, it was just built up too much. And not only was it boom, boom, done, at that point in my life, I could boom and then come right back, but not in this time. This was it. He was out of here. I don't know if it was too late or if, you know, I, whatever it was or if maybe it was the candles or whatever. Maybe it was too serene, but my guy was asleep and he wasn't waking back up. And, you know, women always have like all of these. They always try to prime the, the situation. They always try to they work their magic to try to get things going again. Just wasn't happening. Wasn't happening. We were out of here. And I could tell that while she said it was OK that there was some disappointment in her face, in her voice. She was a little disappointed because just as I, as, as I had waited, she had made up her mind to do this, and she had slept with a fat man. And in sleeping with a fat man, she at least hoped for good sex because she had slept with a fat man. So um, it was bad. Now, this is in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where one bad dick report uh, can ruin you forever. This has happened. I've seen it happen. I've seen brothers. I, I had a group of girls. We called them the pink ladies. Shout out to Marie, Afi, uh, uh, Allison, Tidra, um, Unsa, and Jody. They were the pink ladies. They were like our female companions, right? These were my. This was my Robin Givens crew, like Hove said in that song. I would listen to them talk about guys, and I would be mortified at what can happen to you if you fuck up one time. If you fuck up and you don't come with it one time, it could be bad for you. So on campus a couple of days later, I go there and I see this young lady sitting down. She's sitting down with some of her friends and they're planning something. And I'm thinking, damn, I wonder if she's told everyone about what happened. I wonder if I'm already ruined out here in these streets. 
I wonder if I'm fucked up. Like I was feeling a little bit. So I go over there and she motions me over. She says, come over and sit down. I go over there and I sit down. I sit down right next to her and they're planning some like little party that her organization is having. Um, and then she, one of her friends asks when me and my friends are going to get there. Cause they're trying to figure out how we're going to get in by not having to, to cut through lines or anything like that. Like what time are y'all planning to come if y'all going to be there at the beginning? And she goes, don't worry about it. One thing about Van, if I know him, he probably wants to come early. And when she said that, her friends went, oh, what, what time are you guys trying to get there? Wait, wait, what's early for y'all? And I realized she hadn't told them. It was actually a little inside joke. She hadn't told anyone, and then she need me in my back. I will never forget this person for this, and I'll tell you why. I don't know where she is right now or what she's doing, but... This is somebody who let me catch my L in private. Someone that let me fail in private. Didn't take my worst moment and then broadcast it to everyone. Didn't take my worst moment and then tell everyone to make me feel bad about something that had already happened. This is somebody who respected me enough to let me fail without making me a pariah sexually she let me live she didn't have to she could have done whatever she wants she could tell all her friends whatever she probably did or maybe she did i don't think she did but who knows I, all i know is at that particular point she let me fail in private i say all that and tell all that long drawn out story to say this in the particular time that we live now not only are we not letting each other fail in private, we're not letting ourselves fail in private. We're not giving us room to grow from things that we do wrong because what we're doing is taking every single horrible moment that we have as people and broadcasting it to millions of people who do not know us. We're taking opinions that we have that we haven't fully vetted. And we're telling everyone before we tell the people who we trust in order to work through these opinions and get to a better understanding of issues. We're taking incidents that happen to us, broadcasting them everywhere from before we take the opportunity to step back and go, was I right about that? Am I seeing that the right way? If I have problems with people, issues with people that might be problematic, that might be offensive, that might not be well thought out. Why don't I talk to people that I trust about these things? Why don't I tell my ill shit, my ridiculously bad takes and opinions to people who can help me work through them before I tell a bunch of people who don't know me? Because if you show people the ugly side of you, they'll take the things that are beautiful about you and make them ugly. But if you take the time to at least try to beautify yourself, maybe your ugly will seem a little bit less ugly under the spotlight. Stop rushing to show everyone just how fucked up you are. Stop trying to be such the center of attention in every single situation to where you come off looking like a damn fool every time you open your mouth. That goes for me. I'm guilty of it. And anybody else who's found themselves under the gun for doing something dumb. In the culture right now, we have a unbelievable network of knowledgeable people. Knowledgeable people on every single subject from uh, LGBT rights to um, religious persecution, racism, sexism, all of these people. We have experts on these things. They're literally one click away. If you have questions, if you have fears, if you have concerns, all of these people that I know will be willing to talk to you about it. If you have, con if you have fears or concerns or questions about LGBT rights, I know that my man DeRay McKelson would be willing to talk to you about those things. I know that he would. If you want to know 
if you have issues with the Me Too movement or the way that they work, I know that Tarana Burke, a powerful, fierce sister, would be willing to talk to you about those things. If you have issues with the political paradigm in America and questions about what you should be thinking about politically, I know that Angela Rye is willing to talk to people with these huge platforms about those things. These people are all there willing to educate. So before you say something dumb, try to be smart. Try to get the perspective that you need before you look wild out here. Because then you become something worse than a racist, a bigot, an Islamophobe, a xenophobe. You become a distraction to what we're all trying to do. You become a distraction to what things that we really should be talking about. And that goes for anyone, myself included. I'm going to make a pact that before I step out on these things, that I do the work intellectually as well. Haven't always been perfect, but I'm going to be better. And everyone should try to be better right now. To that girl who didn't sell me out, I appreciate you. Because that just gave me the confidence to do my thing the next time. You guys should have seen it. Here's the thing. I was in rare form because I felt good about her, right? I felt comfortable. Normally, back in those days, I didn't really take my shirt off when I was getting down. But I took my shirt off. And when she first saw the set of titties I was working with, I saw that look in her face again like, damn, should I be doing this? Like, she looked like, what, what have I done in my life to really put myself in this position? But at this point, it was too late. I was confident. I had put baby powder on. The whole shit was getting popping. And it went down, and we were we had fun for the time that we were there. Somewhere, some man has himself a nice lady. I don't still think about you. I'm off that. I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is I appreciate you letting me fail in private. Everyone, give yourself the opportunity to fail without showing the whole fucking world because people ain't forgetting your bullshit. Now. If you didn't want to have, hear a story that had to do with sex, now is the time that you chime back in. We are about to talk to Natalie Manuel, Hillsong Church. Pop some pills. Pop some Jesus pills. Okay? Let's get to it. You're, you're sick? <sighs> really, huh? Getting over it. It's like hopefully the last day. It's been a struggle. Uh, like how? Like what kind of Cold. sickness do you have? I think I just have a cold. Just have a cold? Yeah. So how long, when you, I'm interested in this, when you have a cold, what do you do? How do you take care of yourself? What's your method of cold self-care? It's going to sound disgusting, but garlic clove. See what I'm saying? Chop it up. You never do garlic clove? No. Are you kidding me? I don't do that. Well, I do. Okay. Oregano oil. Oh, my God. Yo, it helps. The natural Burn stuff. Burn your throat off, man. Bro Listen, it helps. Okay. What else? Sudafed. Sudafed. Sleep. Mm -hmm. Orange juice. Yeah. Vitamin C. Yeah. And sleep. You miss one thing. What? Prayer. Oh! Hey! Oh. Now, see, we got the face bait people in there. <laughs> Of and course they put, I pray. They put their faith in Sudafed <laughs> and not that man upstairs. Hey, I didn't say that because that was a given. Mm, that's a given. Hey, okay, so we got Natalie in the house today. I keep wanting to call you Natalie Emanuel, by the way. Natalie Emanuel. I keep Lee. wanting to call you Natalie Emanuel. Do you know why? Why? Game of Thrones. Oh. I'm a huge Game of Thrones fan. I know. Yeah. And some people... They mix up Think, the names. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't look alike, though. You look nothing alike. Yeah. And your message is very, very important. White person in the room, clap for Natalie Manuel Lee, please. <laughs> you got to clap loud because you got to clap with like the strength of three or four white people. Now, this is a podcast I've been wanting to do for a long time, and I'll tell you why. Um, I uh -huh. am a man who was raised with a very strict set of of spiritual beliefs mm -hmm. and I feel very very um, uh, adamantly that those spiritual beliefs are my foundation mm -hmm. the foundation of who I am mm -hmm. okay I sometimes don't do the best thing the best job mm -hmm. of living out what I feel like God's purpose for me is mm -hmm. 
and living out what I feel like uh, a good Christian man should be. I get angry. I get lustful. I get uh, I get focused on so many things other than what I'm supposed to be focusing on. Mm-hmm. And it's a struggle. Yeah. Now, you are with Hillsong Church. Tell a little bit people about, about, about what it is that you do and um, your message and your television show, which I've watched several episodes of. Which you I've did. watched. Well, I watched what they sent me over. Did you like it? I thought I, I, I didn't think that I would like it. <laughs> but... I, I, I didn't think that I would like it, but I was incredibly moved. Oh, come on. I was incredibly it's moved. The, it's for us, man. Yeah, it's I was incredibly us. moved. I thought it was it was exactly what we need. But tell people a little bit about you before I tell you about what a bad Christian I am. First of all, you're not a bad Christian. None of us can oh, be bad Christians. I am a bad Christian. We all fall short. Yeah. Let's, let's get that clear. Yeah, you but know. I, I fall like bow wow short. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm doing my best. Oh, my God. I'm doing my best. I you cannot. Know. Like every morning I wake up, I'm like, dog, you brought me here again? Yeah. You got a plan, don't you? He yeah. sure does. All right. So to tell a little pe- people yeah. about your show. and the kind So of- I have a show called Now with Natalie. It's on the Hillsong channel. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a show about identity and purpose. Um, mm-hmm. I think for me, the reason why it was something that I saw a need of is seeing where our culture is and the plight of humanity and where we are as a people. Mm-hmm. I think that we put our worth and our value you and all these other things but in the right thing Mm -hmm. and what is that we put our worth and our value in the things that we do the money that we have the cars that we drive the clothes that we wear and don't get me wrong god loves us all of us to have an abundant life but when it defines us Mm -hmm. it's when it gets tricky when we put our worth and value in it it's when it gets tricky Mm -hmm. social media has done a great job to sell us this counterfeit of identity and purpose of this thing that we need to reach to in order to feel like we're fulfilled and we're living in our purpose our call so for me um i gathered my friends some family members my community and said let's talk about this and you know i did gather believers and and the reason why i gather believers is because it's it's imperative to talk about how their faith has been a pillar for them to really recognize who they are and why they're here and where they're from Mm. so that is the show. So we have people from Haley Bieber, Tyson Chandler, Jerry Lorenzo, Kelly Angela Rowland. Davis, mm-hmm. Kelly Rowland, mm-hmm. Elaine Welchroth, and and they go in, they go in, and they tell us, they tell us they're real, but more importantly, they tell us their story, mm-hmm. and they tell us their struggles. But again, where we are as a culture, it's not good. Mm. Where we are as humanity, it's not good, mm. because we feel like with that thing over there, social media, Instagram, Facebook, mm-hmm. we go on our phones and all we do is compare ourselves. Right. That's all we do, and we're not realizing that we're not only comparing ourselves to something that's fabricated, but we're comparing ourselves to something that we were never intended to be in the first place. Which is what? Which is somebody else. Right. You were never. T- To be me, obviously not, you're a guy, and I was never to be you for the simple fact of there's no competition ever. There's no reason to try to be like someone else. That's not how how God created you. Mm -hmm. There can never be someone bigger and better than Van because there's only one you and vice versa. And I don't want to sit here and say that I got it all perfect and I got it right. Mm -hmm. It took me a very long time, and I still struggle with it till this day Mm -hmm. of realizing, oh, my God, I can't really compare myself. It's a struggle, but the reality is, why if we know that there's only one me right um so you know what's funny is that uh tell me like working here at tmz sometimes we uh <laughs> this, is, this is sort of arrogant uh on my part but people would there's a sometimes i feel like in order to get people to accept the the status quo of society or what you need people to feel ordinary so that they do what you want them to do sometimes. That's how I feel. I feel like I feel like it like huge corporations and different people like that, they want you to feel like you're a worker bee. Sure. So that um you don't ever really set foot into what your life really can give to you. Because if there are a million people doing that, then who's gonna pour the driveways and do things like but that? But do you know why they do that? Why? They're insecure leaders. All right. We have insecure leaders that are leading an insecure pack. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to create more followers. You're supposed to create more leaders. Mm -hmm. That's the issue. Yeah. And people, when I'm, when we're working here, they go, they say, they say to me, Van, you're not special. And I say, well, I am the only Van who has ever existed 
and I'm the only van that ever will exist. So I'm actually the definition of special. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I'm the definition of van. Right, I'm the definition of van. <laughs> and so I'm the rarest thing you could really yes. ever get because I'm the only me that there's ever going to be. Yeah. So I like, I, I guess, what makes it so hard for people and to step into who they are, what they're supposed to be, and what their unique purpose is. Why do people feel like that's so hard to access? A lot of the mental health issues that, we, uh, that we're talking about now, a lot of the listlessness that we're talking about, are people that are here and don't know what it is that they're supposed to do. How do you find what it is that you're supposed to do? Because if you don't know who you are, if you don't know where you're from, you won't know why you're here. Mm. So... Who are you? Where, where are you from? I believe you're from the man above. That's mm. who created you. Right. So you need to go to the person that created you. You don't need to go to social media. Social media didn't create you. The culture didn't create you. He created you. So mm. it's your job to ask him and lean in and say, what, why am I here? Who are you? You're not what the culture says you are. Mm -hmm. The culture can't put a label on you. They didn't create you. They didn't make you. Only he can put a label on you. Mm -hmm. So when you're confident in who you are, if you know that you're accepted, you know that you're redeemed, you know that you're whole, if you know that you're all those things, it'll be easier for you to find out why you're here. Right. Does that make sense? Of course. But I that's it. And I, I understand I'm making it seem like it's so easy. It's not easy. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. But I think that once we have that an awakening for as a culture, we'll be free. Right. Why Why do you feel like it's it's so hard for people to grab onto because the mass is telling us that we have to grab onto something else that's not a truth that's mm -hmm. fabricated the mass is saying you have to be this in order to fill this tyson chandler talks about that and he goes in on it on in his episode about you know becoming famous and what it means to stay famous mm -hmm. and how he says that did you watch that episode yet uh no Okay. Mm -hmm. um, he says that you have to be what the forces of the mass want you to be mm -hmm. in order to stay there, in order to feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And that's not who you want to be. That's not who you want to become. So to me, it's hard because it's counterculture. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. counterculture. It's counterculture to say that we don't have to be all these things to mm -hmm. feel something. And listen, I struggle with it. I'm sure you have too. It's an everyday thing that we struggle with, but it's a false narrative that's being told. You talked about God and what he has yeah. in store for us. Um, I was remember like way back in the day, right? I was driving. I can't remember which which guy I was listening to. I was listening to one of these guys. <laughs> and they were all one there. of the preachers. One of the preachers. One I was listening pastors. to one of the preachers. And I remember he said something. This was back in Baton Rouge that I never forgot. And he was like, I want you to stop and consider something about God for a second. And he was like, um, God longs for you Ooh. he was like god created all this stuff did all of these things and what he wants more than anything is for you to fellowship with him is the most powerful being in the world just wants you to be like i appreciate it i love you too come on like it, it's this that's all that that god really wants for you yeah. there's certain ways he wants you to show that love but that's what god and it, boy and it it uh, that struck me for like a long time. I mm. I grappled with the idea that that a being, and it's funny because I did these questions on Instagram. You know how people do those questions? Yeah. And people ask me, yeah. uh, what five questions would would you ask God? And I was like, really, they're not five. The questions I would ask God is, why me? Why us? Mm. Like why? Like what's so special about us that the most powerful being in the entire universe Ooh. would want? our love like why us um and i remember trying to have a conversation that's deep yeah i mean th th that's Ooh, if that I, is if, deep. if i was gonna ask a question that's what the question would be man like yeah. what is because when you look at men and women like you sometimes we get so bogged down in the evil that we do to one another and the ways that we marginalize and oppress and hurt one another you start to think god what is so special about us mm -hmm that God loves us this much. Yeah. If someone were asking you, why does God love man? What would you say? Why does he love man? Like, why does he love us? Like, why, like, why, like, if you were trying to explain to someone, because a lot of people out there, and the reason why I'm asking this question is because I immediately took that home to one of my homeboys. Yeah. Who just doesn't have any 
spirituality in mm-hmm. it. I was trying to explain to him mm. that there's something bigger, more powerful than you yeah. that wants to see you do good. And wants because to he believes in us. Mm. He believes in us. Jesus died for us on the cross. He believes in us. He be- That's why I said when you were like, I'm such a bad Christian, there's no such thing as being a bad Christian. Yes, there is. We all sin. No, there's right. not. Right. There's no sin that's greater than it, another. What if we do it consecutive days? Does it matter? Right. Does it matter? What if it's like 10 days? It row? doesn't matter. 20. 20, Natalie. 30, 50. 30. We all sin. Right. We all sin and no sin is greater than another. That's scripture. Mm. So he believes in us. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, He just wants us to experience his love. That's Mm -hmm. the whole point of it. I know it sounds so cliche, but that's just the reality. And there's so much peace. The fruit that comes with the fellowship, like you were talking about earlier Mm -hmm. with him, it's just so much peace, so much joy. And um, we have to realize that we're not here for us. Mm. We're not here for us. Right. We're here for others. Haley talks about that in her first episode. Mm -hmm. Nothing is about us. That's what she says. Nothing is about us. And when we get too high and mighty, that's when we get it wrong. Mm -hmm. The greatest among us serve. Right. In order for us to be a leader, we have to serve. Mm -hmm. So why does God love us? Because he believes in us and he just wants to experience his love and fellowship. The the part about, because even all of the great uh, figures from the Bible were ultimately servants. (coughs) Do you think... That that's something that we're lacking. One thing that social media does tell us to do is get as much as you can, uh, show everybody what you have. And I don't. I think we're getting away from. Actually, we have some really good examples lately. Who of, of people who are serving others? Yeah, Hove, Jay, Hove, love Hove. Hove is serving. Love Hove. Hove. Is, Hove is Hove. I mean, you know, he he reaps the benefit <laughs> of, yeah. of all the biz, different business, but he's serving. He's yeah. doing what he can to make his community yep. um, better. Sure is. And I and I think that that's something that we're getting away from, mm-hmm. like culturally and on the level, it's disconnecting us. Yeah. If I made you in charge of Christianity right now, if I made you in charge of spirituality, how would you repackage? Christianity to people to make them understand how amazing it is because when I was growing up it there wasn't really a choice right Mm. I went to church I understood God like I had to I still had to find grace in my life me and Mm -hmm. Aaron Foster talked about this there was a moment where like you guys aren't gonna believe it there's a moment that God spoke to me there was a moment where of course I believe it how would I not believe well people listen to the podcast (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Y'all be knowing, there, there, but there, we a, all fall short. There's a moment where God spoke to me. And so for 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 me, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm telling you, man, I've been in some weird situations. It's been like I've been sitting around with my boys and, you know, we all doing our things. Be like, what you mean he spoke to you? I mean, like, I how did you know it was him? How did I know that it was mm-hmm. God? Because it was too familiar for it to be anyone else. <sighs> <laughs> So it was talking about how would I repackage Christianity and spirituality? Mm-hmm. It's that to me, it's about having a relationship. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, it's a relationship. It's a give and take. Right. God doesn't need us. Right. He wants us to co-labor with him. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's just a relationship. In order for me to get to know you better, I have to spend time with you. Right. I have to understand your tone. I have to understand your gestures. I have to understand your voice. Mm-hmm. Scripture says, my sheep know my voice. So how would I tell the culture how to create a relationship with the Father is simply spend time. Mm. You got to spend time. How can you get to know somebody if you don't spend time with them? Mm-hmm. It's just the same thing as an everyday relationship. Why so don't that's pe- so I'm sorry. Why don't people bad. think that being uh, why is there this narrative now that like you can't be a cool Christian anymore? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know. I, I don't know if people think that they have to wear button up in suits every day to go to church. Mm-hmm. You know, scripture says come as you are. Mm-hmm. You got to come as you are. I mean, I'm looking like this. You're looking like that. And you're talking about God spoke to you. I'm looking like what? I like that. this is like I'm looking like well, how am I looking? See what I'm saying? See, we were bonding oh in the spirit, God. and then my sister fine. goes, "I'm looking like this." By the way, you know what I when mean? When y'all see the video, uh, she looks very well put together. This is a, a, a beautiful black woman. I look like I could be doing a lineup at any particular time. Yes, you are. On. 
You know what I'm saying? I got the whole situation right here. Wow. But um, I think that we there have are, this... there, are, there are places that, though, like there's a church. I'm not going to name the church. that I used to do the TMZ tour, and I am from the South, so there's a specific way that you dress when you go to church. I remember we used to come up Melrose, and I would see people. I would be on the bus, and I'd be like, oh, okay. Where are these girls going? All right. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to holler at anything, but I was like, yeah, like, what is it? Is there a, a Sunday's a, best dress? A day party or something like that that they're going to? And it turned out oh. that they were going to church. And I was like, ooh. <laughs> Come as you are. And they they're going they're as going. they are. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it doesn't matter. But I think to go back to your question, I think the preconceived notion is that we have to be this this cookie cutter person mm -hmm. in order to feel like we can claim Christian mm -hmm. or that we can claim that we have a relationship with God. Right. And that's completely false. It's a completely false narrative. Where does that narrative come from? Do you feel like there are some Christians that are responsible for that narrative? I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, yeah. but but maybe people just have their preconceived notions of it. Right. But I know for me that growing up, yeah, there were times that we were in church that we would have to wear our Sunday's best. Mm -hmm. And then there was other ways that we would just come as we were. Right. But then also for us, we would get dressed to respect the house of God. Yeah. So it's just how you were, you know, you grew up and how you were raised. Yeah. But for us, I mean... Our parents simply instilled it in us, like, you come as you are, it does not matter. And that's why I keep saying there's nothing as called as a bad Christian. I'm sorry, mm. there's not. Mm. We all sin, yeah. but that's why Jesus died on the cross, because he knew we would sin. Right. You know what's funny? Is I was telling, um, I was talking to, like, every once in a while, you're in the presence of, like, someone who has a real anointing on them. Mm. Like, a, like a real anointing. And when they have mm. it on them, uh, it's like it's very comforting, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Like every once in a while, you're 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 around somebody and they and they just they're just like kind and gracious mm -hmm. and patient mm -hmm. and loving, and you always think, man, if I could get like that person, I could be the perfect ambassador. Um, for Christ, for spirituality, for a relationship with God. If I could just be more like this person. There's never a perfect ambassador. Come on. He uses broken vessels all the time. Mm. I'm broken. You're broken. And we're here talking about him right now. I'm shattered. I keep trying to tell you. <laughs> I keep trying to tell you. Jesus needs to use some crazy glue. Um, so, purpose. Yeah. Is defined to you as what? Um, your gifts and your talents mm -hmm. and your passions. I think that a lot of us have this thing that it's this big destiny that we need to get to. I always say T.D. Jake said once that if it's not the thing, it's the thing leading to the thing. Mm -hmm. So you're always in purpose. Right. And we always need that one thing that we did today for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But um, again, I think that it's it's your gifts that are being able to be used for other people. Mm -hmm. And what would you do for free? Mm. So... When you say purpose, are you talking about specifically occupation? What's the difference between a purpose and a calling, you feel like? I think purpose is in your everyday life. I think calling is a part of your gift. Okay. But they're also the same, in my opinion. I think that they're woven together mm -hmm. the same way. How'd you find yours? Whew, a lot of time with him. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know mine until a couple of years ago, and I'm still it's still unfolding. Okay. Um, I was working with my brother, Fear of God, mm -hmm. left there and um, went. Say his name because everybody here is going to freak out. Jerry Lorenzo. Oh my God, <laughs> I want a piece of apparel. That's what everyone's going to do. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah I see y'all, y'all know the ball players wear and it's, it's yeah. As y'all should want a piece of apparel it's, because it's, it's, it's big, fire. Yeah, okay, when you go buy that apparel, just make sure you save up for it. Cause they ain't <laughs> Yo, it's they ain't worth it. They ain't slanging these pieces for cheap. It's worth, hey, it's I'm worth every piece. I'm not saying it's not worth it. By the way, you know what else it is? It's black owned. So, you know what I'm saying? Forget about a boycott. Don't boycott support. <laughs> No, they ain't got to boycott black nobody. Owned. Go buy and it's black owned and it's hot. Hot. Yeah, yeah. Hot. And he put his blood, sweat, and tears in it and it's fire. Shout out to that. And brother. the meaning is 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 fire. Fear of God. Mm. We better fear him. We need to have reverence. Mm. But anyways. Go for it. Um, what were we saying? Uh, you were talking about how you found your purpose. Yeah, so after I transitioned out of that season, um, I went through a deep, deep depression mm. because I didn't feel I felt like my worth and value was a part of the title that I was carrying. Which was what? Um, working with my brother. Oh, okay, working with yeah. you. Yeah, and yeah. so I had a really, really rude awakening, but a beautiful awakening. God was like, your value and your worth is not in 
any of those things Mm -hmm. except for in me. And we have to just come to that realization that nine times out of 10, we're thinking we're something because you have the Red Pill podcast. Mm -hmm. You are, you are somebody, but that doesn't define you. Right. Mm. Mm. And you know, it doesn't. Yeah, I know it doesn't. I think so many times what people really want is they want meaning, right? Some things feel Mm -hmm. so random Mm -hmm. and um, some things feel like my mom like when when Ye comes in or whatever like that, me we have that whole thing. My mom goes, my mom goes, oh, I'm glad that finally played out for you. And I'm like, what do you mean? Mm. You're mm-hmm. glad that finally played out for me. She goes, way way back in the day, way back in the day, like I came into the house and I was listening to something I thought it was Curtis Mayfield, and um, I came into your room and you were jamming to Kanye West. She's like, this is like when you were still just a boy. Now, granted, I was 24 at this time. She's like, you were jamming to Kanye West, and now. Every single time that uh, I would come around, you would be listening to him. You would be consuming him. You'd be, mm. You were so invested into him. And God was preparing you for a moment to where you had to speak some truth to him. Wow. And it took you that long to prepare for it. And I would just look at her. Wow. I'd be like, yo, man, how are you always saying stuff like that? <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Wow. And so, and so I think, though, that sometimes these things happen. And for me, I would have never been able to come up with that, right? Wow. Because these things happen so randomly. Mm-hmm. They happen so randomly that they give me anxiety, right? When I'm, when I'm prepared to do all of these things that I'm trying to do now, I think I get nervous. I think, what if that would have never happened? Yeah. What if these things would never happen? What else might not happen for me that I need to happen? Yeah. And... Even with me, with having a base, it gets hard sometimes to understand what this actually all means. Mm. And it leaves me without a rudder and without a compass sometimes and searching for that. Yeah. And I think with so many distractions now, people are really looking for meaning. Mm. For someone that's looking for that, how would you help them find it? Service. You have to serve. You have to serve other people. Mm -hmm. If you know that you have a gift, serve them with your gift. Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Like if you know that you're a good stylist, or if you know that you can cut hair well, if you know you can do makeup well, give them your service. That's a service. Give them your gift. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, that could be meaning because you know that you're helping somebody, you're serving somebody with the gift that he gave you. Mm -hmm. That's meaning. Yeah. How, how How do we... Scripture is like imprinted in forever, right? Mm-hmm. But the world is changing so rapidly and we want to be open to everyone and everything. Mm-hmm. How do you personally feel like we deal with the changing landscape of society? For example, my sister is one of the most devout people that I know. Mm-hmm. My sister loves God. Mm-hmm. My sister is a lesbian. Mm-hmm. How do all of those things come together because I feel like God made people so that he could love them and so that they could love each other. Mm -hmm. How does Christianity get away from the identity that some people have of it, of being exclusionary towards certain lifestyles? That that's, that's their own walk. I can't answer that for them, but Mm -hmm. I know for me that you, again, like scripture says, you come as you are. God loves people. So regardless of whatever that thing that, you know, people may not agree with. Mm-hmm. He's called us to love those people mm-hmm. just the way that they are. Right. So I can't speak for anybody else. Do you ever feel like, do you ever, does it ever bother you that sometimes Christianity gets a bad rap in situations like that? Like there are so many people out there that use the Bible or Jesus as a method to fuel their own hatred. Um, whereas that's really not what the whole thing is about. Is that ever frustrating for you? Yeah, because it's, we're, we're called to love people as they are. Right. That's the only thing that I could think of. That's the only thing that I know. That's the only thing that I'm convicted with. Mm-hmm. I know that what he says for us to do mm-hmm. is love them as they are. Right. So, yeah, it could be frustrating. But at the end of the day, we're called to love. Mm-hmm. What's your favorite part of church? Fellowship. Community. Mm. People don't realize that we need community. We can't live in this isolation world behind our phones. Mm-hmm. We're dying because yeah. of it, you know, because of the loneliness. And you hate social media. I don't hate it. I love it. You, I don't think you. I'm a, let me, let me tell you something. Hey, 
Put Natalie's Instagram on the screen. Yeah, yeah, no. Like, like, like. Uh, I didn't mean to snap my finger at you, by the way. Yes, yeah, I, I just say, got, like, dang, my, I don't know if you should mean, listen to no, him. I didn't mean to snap my finger. Put Natalie's Instagram That's not up service. On the screen. What? That right there? That wasn't me service. Me and Maddie have a weird relationship, though. Like, Maddie one time hit me up. I was like, yo, Maddie, I need some clips. Maddie was like, Van. Wait, that's the show Instagram. Yeah, see. No. Go back to. Uh, you could go to following and it's Natalie. Go to the two that are following. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh wow. you weren't prepared. Oh. Wow. You could click on the picture right down. No, no, no. Like me right there. Yeah, click that. And then click. All right. There we go. Natalie, man. Okay, so click that right there. All right, so let's. I look, like it. Let's, social let's media. Look, let's, let's see if she's actually <laughs> using social media. Oh, by the way. This brother. That's my husband, I best know. friend. Hey, man. Fine. I look. I looked at this brother right here. I don't Fine. like seeing people that are more handsome than me. <laughs> like, I, cause Fine. every 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 once in a while, I wake up <sighs> and I go, man, I'm handsome today. And then look at this dude, freckles all over. Fine. The place. I've known him since I was 14. Tell me about this relationship and what it does for you in your life. Ooh, great question. Um, met him when I was 14. Been my best friend ever since. We've been married for three years. He is. He puts me in my place. Mm -hmm. When they say your partner is a mirror of you, mm -hmm. he lets me know like it is. Mm -hmm. If I ever I get out of line, he checks me. Mm -hmm. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Marriage is a lot of work, but it's so worth it. What kind of work is it? Self work. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. It's it's a mirror. It, it makes you really undo things that you were never intended to be. Wow. It makes you undo things that you were never intended to be. Unpack that if you can. Unpack it. Undo. Make people believe in marriage because it seems like we're losing that too. Selfishness. I was selfish. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize how much I was. But it's, I mean, marriage is selfless. Mm -hmm. um, may, maybe if you have pride or ego issues or if you have hardheadedness issues, all those issues that you became, that you, the traits that you grabbed on along the way, Marriage, what he will do, mm -hmm. and what marriage will do, right. will make you undo it in order for it to work. Mm. But that's the power of becoming one. Man, get him off the screen, man. No, you know he's fine. I'm, I'm you know he's out. fine. Get him off the screen, man. And, um, yeah, his work is great. He does character and um, brand development for athletes. Oh, wow. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So... You in, in, so I like social media. So I'm, like, I'm looking at your social media. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to figure it out. You're doing a lot of stunting. On oh, social no, media, I'm right not. here. Yes, you are, man. But I'm still giving oh, a message. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in the episodes. Yes, I, I, I saw it. Oh, you watched the episode? Uh, excuse me. Go click. I can tell you what the page. Looks like. <laughs> like, it, it, yeah, Elaine. Yeah. Um. I'll, we we are all at a dinner. It was me, her, Tracy Ellis Ross, Jesse Williams, a couple of. Oh, weeks a couple ago. weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we were all, all at oh, dinner. I love it. Yeah. Um. What do you learn from these people when you talk to them? So many different people you've had her, you've had your brother, you've had Haley, you've had Kelly Rowland, yeah, you've had Tyson Chandler, yeah. Um, so many different people, so many different walks of life. What are the common threads? What do you learn? Uh, the common thread is that no matter the fame or the success, we all struggle with the same thing. And what is that same thing? Same thing is, you know, compare and compete and really understanding why we're here and the meaning of why we're here. Mm -hmm. Kelly goes, Did you watch her episode? Mm -mm. She, I mean, she breaks it down of, of saying that it, there's more to life than the number ones and I the records. That. And yeah, she, she said, <laughs> I did see that part. She said, she said that she was obsessed with the number ones and like, yeah, uh, and things like that. And, and she would put a lot of pressure on herself. Yeah. yeah. But she realized that it's, you know, there's a bigger. So the common thread of all of them is not only the compare and compete, which is tough, but realizing that there's a bigger reason why we're here. We're going to get back to Natalie Manuel in a second. She's giving us that good word. But listen, I got to tell you guys something. I don't know if y'all know, but I have a huge 65-inch television at the house. I'm doing well, man, you know. Watch Game of Thrones on that. But what happens with that is you got your Xbox hooked up to it. Uh, yes, I love the Xbox, uh, not the PS2. You got your cable box. You got all kinds of things hooked up to it. You get a little cluttering, okay? Cluttery for me. I found something that helps me deal with the clutter. Clean up your remote control clutter with Control Center by Cavo. Control Center simplifies your home theater so you can control everything connected to your TV with one easy to use remote with voice control. So that's one remote, so you have to have a bunch of different remotes around and stuff like that. Plug in your streamer, sound system, cable, or satellite, even your game console, and Control Center does it all. Don't waste time fiddling with different remotes or weeding through messy search results till you get to the content you want. 
We all know this. You have one remote, you got to turn the TV up. The other remote, you change the channels. After a while, you just ended up getting frustrated with everything. It's ridiculous. Life's supposed to be easy. In fact, you can enjoy every second of couch time and easily switch between content without moving a muscle. Let Control Center take your at-home entertainment experience from stressful to simple and enjoy what you want, when you want, with ease. My thing with Control Center is, with all the different stuff that I have going on, when I use it, it makes it very simple for me to go between all of these deals. We don't want to be stressed out when we're watching the TV situations, okay? When between the Roku deal and the, the, the cable box and the Xbox, I didn't, the Xbox controller is actually interesting because I don't really play my Xbox as much as I used to. I really use it for an entertainment system to watch different things, and you can also use Control Center for that as well. It's a very, very handy. If you have a lot of stuff, you should really check it out. Shop now and get 40% off Control Center with promo code PILL, that's P-I-L-L, -L, 59.99, 40% off of regular price and of 99.95. So you get it for half the price, basically, man. Come on, man, that's dope. Service plan is required. First 45 days free, though, so you can get used to it. Control Center is available at caavo.com and Best Buy. That's Control Center by Cavo. One remote does it all. I'm assuming that you were raised pretty religious. Yeah. Okay. So that's an advantage, can be an advantage as far as developing a relationship with God because it's implanted in you as your brain is developing and growing. You see, you have a sense of spirituality. Now, there was a time where I was falling away, where I was questioning a lot of things, where I was getting around a lot of kids like, you don't really believe that, do you? And I'd be like, yeah, of course. Um, for people who don't have the foundation um, like, how do you reach out to them? What do you mean? How do I reach out? Like for somebody that like for me, me and you're going to have a conversation, right? My mm -hmm. mother's been telling me about God's grace. My father's been telling me about God's grace. My grandmother's been telling me about God's grace. And I still have to find it myself. But there are certain people like guys that I hoop with or might be around and stuff like that. Or, and I, I sometimes try to like reach out to them, especially when they're having some problems and go, yo, man, there is somebody bigger than me or whoever that you could take this to. How do you impart that onto someone? You have to meet them where they are. So if you know that they may believe in one thing but not maybe believe in another, you have to literally meet them where they are. It's just mm -hmm. like I just have a vision of like you being taller than me and mm -hmm. I'm shorter. Come down where I am right. and meet me where I am and speak to me where I'm at. I don't at. think I can get as short as what you <laughs> You're, like when you came you're in, not you're that like, you're, tall. Yeah, I'm not that tall. I you're mean, not if you're, that tall. If you're interviewing Tyson Chandler, I'm not tall. I mean, but like, but like compared to me, you're. I mean, you're, I'm, compared to you, I'm pretty. I'm pretty tall. Man. Okay, fine. So you were saying, get down to where they are, like which is you is very, very low to the ground. Okay, fine. Yeah, but yeah, meet them where they are. Mm -hmm. Meet them where they are, and and just see that need and speak to that need. Yeah. You know, for me, I don't think it's you have to throw it all in their face at once. That's why you have to meet them where they are. You can't maybe scare them away with certain things that they're maybe not be familiar with. Mm -hmm. A lot of times if people aren't believers, scripture can be, you know, jargon that they don't understand. Right. So you have to put it in a vernacular in a way that they can understand. So that's what I mean by meeting them where they are. Can you be a Christian in a club? Yes. Can you? Yes. You can be a Christian in a club. How can you not? You can be a Christian and pop you on yes, Friday night. Yes, you can pop it and still be a Christian. You can, you can, you can do that. Yes. All right, because listen, a lot of people feel like, because for, for like. But what like, you going for, though? See, now we get into the nitty gritty. So, so like, but you what can, you going for? What, like, if you, you go, can have a good time. You can have a good what's time. What's the cap on how good of a time you You're can have? You're making it seem as though in order to be a Christian, you have to live this square life. That's not what it is, man. Mm. It's not what it is. You could still have a good time. You can st still go out, you know, let loose, however that may be. But, mm -hmm. I mean, you can't abuse certain things. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? One of the things that you feel like people are abusing right now that you really want to see them have more responsibility with? Probably abusing alcohol. Yeah. Because it takes us to places where we shouldn't go and shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. Something of t some Somebody using something too much is never a good thing. Right, yeah. So, I mean... Right. Are we over how there's no doubt about the fact that we're over sexualized. Um, what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on kind of what you see as we talk about Instagram, we talk about different things like that as far as the culture of uh, of 
of really just kind of hedonism that we're in that I that we all. What do you? Indulge. Can you just break it down? I mean, <laughs> break it down for us. I don't want to call anybody uh, call anybody out, but we seem to be a little bit more free. Yeah, which is nothing. I don't have any. I, listen, I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. I don't. I don't. Personally, I think that everyone should be able to assert their personal sexual liberation and their freedom however they want. But I just want to know if you think, um, and if that's, I really do mean that. I'm not, that's not a platitude, but I wonder if you think that there's anything inherently dangerous about any of the sexual freedom that you feel like is on social media or is in the media or is any place. Yeah, temptation. It's Mm. dangerous. It's dangerous. Mm. I mean, scripture says, protect your ear gates and your eye gates. And so you know some people that you probably shouldn't be following, mm. and you know that where that train of thought can take you. Yeah. Protect your ear gates and your eye gates. That's scripture. That's wisdom. Right. So. So. That's on you. Yeah. To have the discipline to unfollow the things that you shouldn't, and that's on them if they feel that they want to be liberated and free in whatever the way that they feel. Mm-hmm. That's not me. Right. That's not my life. Yeah. But. So we have to be. There's a little bit more discipline that heck yeah, right? You know what you can take and what you can't, right? That's very true. <laughs> As the, 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 <laughs> that's why you're stuttering. Well, it's not. It's not that. It's not so much that I'm stuttering because what I'm saying is, you know, it. You're right. <laughs> Thank wait, you. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. No, 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 no. There's no, no if, no, ands, no, or no, buts. No if ands, or buts, man. There's no if ands, or buts. We gotta be. And by the way, as I mature. Yeah. Like there are a lot of things that I dealt with. I dealt with for a long time. Uh, I, I, an addiction to like the same addiction Kurt Franklin had. Like I was told, by the way, I should, we should be completely transparent. Listeners of the Red Pill, if you don't hear Van cursing as much as he normally curses, if you don't hear Van using oh, wow. some of the language as, oh, I this you, you ever listened to this podcast before? Yeah, I'm just saying. Wow, thank, look at look at that right, evolution. If you, if you don't hear me doing this. It's not because I've evolved. It's specifically because Natalie's here. And I was told <laughs> not to be as spicy as what I normally am. I was told, listen, this is faith-based. This is about Jesus. Okay, you want to spend an eternity in hell? You better clean your mouth up. That's what I was told. <laughs> That's exactly what they said to me. The they, they threatened my eternal salvation. <laughs> um, we didn't do that. You didn't. Uh, so, speaking of hell, is hell a thing? Yeah, there's heaven and hell. There's heaven and hell. Yeah. So, um, <coughs> uh, there is a, there's a, a movement, or not even a movement, there's a sort of a, uh, my dad is very big on the concept of hell. And hell okay. was the way that my dad would enforce Scare you? Story. Yeah. I think I told the iron story. Did I tell the iron story with the devil's footprint? I was ironing when I shouldn't have been ironing, and the iron fell on the ground, and it, 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 it seared an iron print into the ground. And my dad walks up there. He says, you know what? You was up here doing you what some of you were supposed to do. You know what that is? It's a Hell? devil's footprint. Oh, my God. It's that's so good. It's a devil's footprint that's in your room right that's there. That's good. And when my, that was good until my dad said, now, when you go to sleep tonight, there's a possibility you could wake up and Satan could be standing <laughs> in his hoofprint. Now, I want you to know, you guys, it was 1987. I was seven years old. I and think that's a little bit much. he's still scarred. It, it, uh, Clearly. I would never not think that. I was like sleeping under the bed. <laughs> I was sleeping with my Bible and all. So, do you think some? Do do you think though that um that people sort of that sort of brand of Christianity where you say, listen, if you don't do this, I'm babbling. Where does consequence fall into all of this? Because God has eternal consequence for sin. Yeah. That's something we don't talk much about anymore. Yeah. Is there still a place to discuss that? As far as heaven and hell. As far as, yeah, well, I mean, even on earth there, you pay for your sins. But we don't talk too much about what goes wrong if you go wrong anymore. I feel like. Well, yeah, I mean, there's consequences that happen. Do I know what consequences you'll have? I don't know. That's between you and him. All right. You know what I mean? There's lessons that I've had to learn. Give me some of them. Oof. Something where you feel like God just sat you down. Chill, Natalie, and learn this right here. Um, my mouth. Mm-hmm. As a child, don't say it mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like that. Tell. Like you can see it. I could oh tell. my gosh. I could tell. Uh, my mouth got me in trouble mm-hmm. growing up a lot, but it was it was definitely a lot of consequences that came with that. Mm-hmm. Where, you know, my parents would always say, you know, be slow to speak and quick to listen, and that's hard for me. 
mm. and and seeing or was hard for me um, and seeing that it was probably one of the greatest things that was such a hard thing for me and now to see that I'm able to have a show to listen to people mm. so it's it's definitely he can switch it if 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 you listen mm -hmm. but he sat me down like if you don't get this right if you don't get this together who would have thought that it was going to be a part of my purpose and a part of the plan mm. so yeah it's big like it's it's always interesting to kind of kind of find that and like and learn those lessons for me for a long time it was uh as outspoken as i am now i've always been that way to people within my life been what way outspoken yeah like willing to put my opinions out there to people that were around me but there was a time uh in my life where i was if i didn't know you and if i wasn't comfortable with you i wouldn't say a word it was very very shy very to myself mm. And my mom would just be like, you weren't created to be that. That's not mm. why That's not why you're here. And she said, like, somewhere you know that, so you got to kind of work with God and you kind of got to find Would that. she say that when you were younger or now? Oh, she would say it like when I was when I was younger. My mother's my biggest fan. When I was younger, my mother would, would, would tell me about, like, she would say, you're burdened with purpose, fan. Oof. And she would be like, she would be like, son, embrace it. Like you're burdened with purpose. Yeah, you know what I mean. I heard Loki said that in Avengers too. Uh, like, he, like, like he says, "I am burdened with glorious purpose" because he had to take over the world. But, um, but my mother would say that she would be like, like, uh, understand it. And she always speaks in the language of the eternal. What this is gonna mean forever. What this is gonna mean for everyone. And there's such big concepts that sometimes I feel like people get afraid of spirituality because the one thing it will do is something that people have a problem doing is it'll put you uh, completely in the place of this world that's so much bigger than you. So much bigger. And we take the pressure off ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if we think that if we're doing God's will for our life, God doesn't need us, but we co-labor with him. Mm -hmm. If you know that you're doing this show, or if you know that you're doing certain things for his glory, the pressure comes off of you because it's up to him. Mm -hmm. The results are up to him. And there's this, like you said, there's this bigger world. There's this bigger spirituality that is way bigger than just this. Mm -hmm. But the pressure comes off once we have faith and once we believe that he'll take control of it. Now, you, you spoke with Haley Bieber. Mm-hmm. Uh, Haley and Justin are people that we talk about a lot here. And you're with Hillsong, right? Mm -hmm. So they've been going to Hillsong for a while. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's so hard for people to believe that they're as devout as they are? I don't know. Because they are. And I learned from them. It's mm -hmm. incredible. But it's incredible. Everyone wants to... Uh, every and they should, they, they should believe. What, what, they, what they say about their faith, they should believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's weird... Because we'll have conversations in there and they'll be like, there's no possible way. And I'm like, why? The kid's 25. He's been doing this thing for a long time. He's found something that works for his life, that's moving for his life. Why is it so hard to believe? Why, do you think there's a part of people that don't want to believe that people can actually find God, really believe in God and really embrace it? Justin's been working at this for a while. Haley, was with, really, she comes from a very religious background. Yeah. So why do you think it's hard for people to like to to for it to sit with people? I I don't know, but yeah. I could probably speak for people that are successful and that are famous that maybe the outside world may think that they don't need God. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of people that equate to God is sometimes out of a need, mm -hmm. and so when people are successful or if they have you know everything that they think at their that at their fingertips, they might not think that they need them mm -hmm. him. But I'm not sure. Mm. But I know that they have a devout relationship with him, and I learn from them. They're amazing. Like, what do you learn? Just their dedication All right. to the relationship with God. It's beautiful. Yeah, and they seem like they put that into their marriage as well. Yeah. Working on their marriage. Um, so, what's your favorite movie? Oh, my God, that's such a good question. The Secretariat. Have you heard of it? No, what is that? <laughs> The only reason why I have to say it right now is because it's on my phone and it's a horse. It's a it's a movie about a horse. I know it sounds so emotional. Secretariat is a horse. Yeah, yeah. it's the, it's that movie. It's listen, stop. Don't even judge me. Don't judge me. Let me tell you why. Stop. Listen, y'all. Stop. It's because God can help you with everything except for your taste in movies. No, let me tell you why. Okay. Can tell I me give why. you the reason? Yeah, I know all about Secretariat, by the way. 
it's because the horse, the blinders on the horse, and it just honestly reminded me of the season that I'm in and was in and will continue to be in is to run your own race. Hmm. Thank you. Want to know something else about Secretary? <laughs> and the heart. The heart. Woo! Secretary had a bigger heart than the rest of these horses, man. Don't listen. Listen, I, I got to be honest with you. First of all, that's a terrible movie to pick for your favorite movie. I'm well, sorry. it's not my, t- but right now. Right now is your favorite movie. And probably Hardball. Hardball. Uh, with, wow, where G-Baby gets killed? Man, you are, Chicago? Ser- you are seriously, <laughs> seriously mentally deranged. How could you say Hardball? Man, shout out. Rest in peace, G-Baby. <laughs> like, y'all, yes, yes, oh, yes, oh, this is yes, Secretary yes. right here. Look, nah, forget about this. Let go me to G Baby. Go to go to go to go to G Baby, <laughs> man. Cause shout out to G Baby. I have to tell you why. Tell me about hardball. Because my dad was in baseball, and I mean, I grew up in a baseball family. Okay, what's so, your dad doing baseball? He was a manager of the Chicago White Sox and the New York Mets. Jerry Manuel. <laughs> so what? That's why I love hardball. Wait, what? <laughs> That's your dad? Yes. That's why I love hardball. Yo. I'm so confused. Hey, you guys, you guys know I'm a gigantic baseball fan. Oh. You, that's your fault? Can't you see it? Hold on for a second, man. You lying. <laughs> this, this is what people in L.A. do. They front. Natalie Manuel probably, Lee. Uh, yeah, excuse me. I know that it's the same last name, but <laughs> there's lots of manuals out there. He could Google it. What the hell? So that's why I love hardball, because Chicago, it's in Chicago, and it's baseball. So don't try to say that I'm mentally whatever you called me just now, because I'm not. (laughs) Wow. This is Jerry Manuel's kid in here, man. Wow, I didn't know this. Listen, (laughs) I I really really didn't know this, man. Hey, give it up for, hey, everybody, clap for Jerry Manuel. I I did not know this. Um, Bring up hardball. Uh, So if you can't. That's why. Because you you love baseball, because you. You see a lot of you know, baseball players and stuff like this. Now, this movie right here, if you guys have never seen Hardball, this is Keanu Reeves before he was killing people no. as John Wick. Michael B. Jordan's in this, even though he chooses the gang over baseball when they don't let him play because he's yep. too old. There's Michael B. Jordan. Then there's a kid named G Baby. G Baby. In, in a gang hit, Keanu Reeves, I guess he has some gambling debts. And in order to pay for the gambling debts, he has to coach a kid's baseball team, which makes, of course, perfect sense. And then. At the end of this film, G Baby gets killed. And then they play and they win the championship for G Baby. Why this would be anybody's favorite movie <laughs> when the movie is so tragic? <laughs> it's the sentiment. It's the it's the the, 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 it's the, the sentiment. sentiment. So the reason why I ask people what their favorite movie is, is because normally our favorite films always have a personal there you go. ministry to us and that's yours mm-hmm. because your dad is uh, is is jerry manuel yeah and and it's black kids my dad has a foundation now that serves under underprivileged black kids you mm-hmm. know so it speaks to my heart and then secretary is just the season i'm in yeah you're a big time sports fan uh eh. used to love i still love baseball but it was hard when my dad stopped managing Right. I mean, because it was everything and all that I did every day. All we did was wake up and we would go to games and we would travel and we'd do it all over again. Hmm. Do you feel like God has any place in professional sports? God has a place in everywhere, everything. But what I mean is like praying for your team to win. <laughs> I, I pray for it to win. You pray the for the team to win? A lot of people say you shouldn't pray for your team to win. But I, you... I'd pray for my dad's teams to win. Right. New York Mets, when they almost made the playoffs, I pray. I prayed. I mean, mm-hmm. why not? People say that, like, you know, God doesn't care about sports. God doesn't care about this. God only cares about the big things. God only doesn't care about the small things like a baseball game. What do you think about that? God cares about everything. 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 And he uses everything for his glory. Mm. Mm. Speaking of that good word in here today, do you ever get up there? You, you, do, you, do you preach at, at Hillsong? Do you no. Do you? Do you ever, that's not something that you're interested in? No, whatever God desires for me, I'll, I'll walk it out. Whatever he calls me to do, I'll do. How do you know when God's talking to you? How do you know when he's calling you? Calling I know his voice mm. only because I spend time with him. And I know when I'm not connecting. I, I definitely know Talk when I'm, that. N- I know when I'm not connecting because I don't feel a sense of peace. I'm, I'm not stable. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm kind of waking up and just kind of frantic and not really feeling connected. I know that sounds so kind of cliche but when i'm not 
connected to the source, I just feel, I don't feel protected. I kind of feel all over the place. Do you have friends and people in your life who don't have the same spiritual base? 100%. How do you deal with that? S speak life to them in a way that I know how. But God says, don't judge. Who am I to judge? But can you, can someone get close to you? Could you have a best friend that was an atheist? That's, that's hard. Mm. Because um, scripture talks about being evenly yoked in your marriage and also in your relationship. So a best friend. Like a best friend. That's you difficult talk to because if their morals don't line up with my morals, that's hard. Can you have solid morals without a spiritual base? No, there's how? Just like you're just a you're just a good person that. But where is where is the goodness? Where is that goodness coming from? So I'll tell you why I asked. Somebody yeah. that's very, very close to me. Okay. That's really one of the most honorable men that I know. Mm hmm Atheist. And like as much as I try to go back and forth with this. He with might say he's an atheist, but he's probably not. Oh, interesting. Like what do you what do you mean by that? Because a lot of times we know the truth, but we're afraid to profess it. Mm hmm Yeah. And you think that fear comes from where? From not being good enough, from fear, from not feeling like I can be this perfect thing that society is telling us a perfect Christian has to be. Going back to you saying you're a bad Christian. It's still hard for me to walk into a church. Why? Um, church is for broken people. Church is for sinners. Yeah, but you're going to make me cry. Like it, uh, uh, because, um. You're going to make me cry. Wait, what? It's just it's just hard for me to. Uh, it's just hard. It's 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 hard. Like I don't like. There's a lot of shame. There's like uh, like I'm trying my best to do my best, but I know I could be doing better. And it's and it's um, it's difficult to be around that many people who are better than me. They're not better than you. Who's saying that they're better than you? Yeah, but they're doing it right. It's just hard, man. It's always been hard to be honest with you. It, it it's it's. Since what is doing it right? That is a lie. I'm sorry. The shame, the shame that is being told over your life and in your mental space mm -hmm. is a lie. Mm -hmm. We've all been there. I've been there. Like we've all felt shame, but that's the whole point of church and why Jesus died is because he knew we would fall short consecutively and consistently, like you said, right, every day, all right, day. Right. I feel like sometimes that I'm not sacrificing enough for God, though, that I'm not that that I, I know God, but I'm not willing to give anything up for it, that I'm not really, I'm not, that there are all of these rules and these things that you're supposed to be able to do in your life. And I'm trying my best to like be a good guy. I'm trying my best to, to hold on to it. But like anything else, if you really love God, you're supposed to be able to abide by his rules. No, it's hard. Sin can overtake us. It's hard. It's difficult. Sin can taint us from what we see. It's very difficult. Mm -hmm. I've been a strong Christian my whole life, but I've sinned a lot. Mm -hmm. I've been through a lot. But just try it, please. In the next couple of weeks, just walk in there and just see if he hits you. You will feel his presence and you won't oh, feel shame. Oh, I do. I, I, I do. But then I feel this weird conviction and this thing that I know I can't live up to. and It makes me not go again. It's really weird. It's like... I, I wake up and I pray. I, like, you pray every day? No. But. As I, much as you feel? I just, I, it hits me and I pray. Mm, what hits you? I don't know. It just, it just, it hits me and I pray. Sometimes I'm running and I'm like, oh man, I look around. I'm like, oh, this is so beautiful. I feel you know that he's chasing you every day. Who? Him. You're not talking about the devil standing in the hood. No. Because <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> I try not to think about that anymore. There's a song called Reckless Love. It talks about that, that he'll just chase you. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. It does not matter. It does not matter. So let me ask you this. You going to come to church. I'm going to come. But I don't have to start listening to like inspirational music because huh? I don't really like it. You you don't have to, but you, you will want to. I, I like the songs in church. But, like, it's very hard to be on a treadmill and listen to, like, inspirational songs. Oh, I, I listen to, like, rap during workouts. Like what, Migos? 
like shine bad boys because the beats hot fire. Oh, <laughs> the beats Listen, fire. You're talking to me about all of this faith. Wait, no, stuff, the beats she fire. And the, the no, gangster, the most the gangster. Beat is shine fire. is so gangster. It's the that beat. he was deported from the country. It's the beat. Mm-hmm. Probably not even the radio it's edit. It's the either. beat. You know what? Listen, if you could do it's it, I could do it. It's definitely the radio Sinner. edit. Like, oh, if you could it's do it, I could do it too. Edit. If you could go in with that filth bouncing around in your brain. <laughs> It's the beat. But you don't feel like there are a lot of people like me that that like uh that stay away, well not not stay away from God, but stay away from fellowship just because it's hard to have they they feel like like where I'm from, mm-hmm. where I'm from, the church culture is a very specific way, right? And I used to go to and this is this is a failing of my own. I would go to church and I would see people in church and just knowing some of the stuff that they were doing around town and stuff like that, mm-hmm. I would have my own thing. Like You Yo, feel like they're hypocrites. A little bit. Mm-hmm. And the feeling that I had about them, I don't want that to be me. So I always feel like a part of me is waiting for one more step to really embrace. Uh-uh. No. Uh-uh. You're tripping. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? I don't know. Hmm. Shame is 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 telling on you, and shame is is a lie that the en- it's an enemy tactic that he likes to use for us to not feel like we can have this relationship with God. Mm-hmm. The whole point of us to have a relationship with God is God knew that we would sin. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point. Mm-hmm. That's why he keeps saying, "Come as you are." Mm-hmm. Like you're tripping, mm-hmm. and you know he's he's chasing after, you and he will chase after you until the day you die. Mm-hmm. Last thing I want to um, get into you uh, with about like mental health. Uh huh. A lot of people struggle with mental health issues these days. Mm-hmm. Do you think that a disconnect from spirituality, or excuse me, a connection to spirituality, uh, can help people deal with some of that? It can help. It can help. I mean, we all, but some people can be, you know, have a chemical imbalance that maybe has nothing to do with spirituality, but it's simply something in their DNA Mm -hmm. and that that can, you know, be a catalyst to depression and mental health and to anxiety and all those things. Mm -hmm. But I think if you have something that's consistent and that, that is a pillar, a solid pillar in your life, it can help you, which is, which is your faith. Right. A hundred percent. What, like what, where are you, where are you taking the show? Like, where are you going at with the show? Like who else you got coming up and stuff like that? Season two. All right. Season two is going to, who's going to be on it? I can't tell you yet. You can't tell me one name? No. You can't tell me like one name? No. Not even. Who would you want to see better Ooh. yet? Uh, I know one person I want to see on there. Who? Kevin Durant. Me too. I would love to see Kevin Why Durant. Why Kevin Durant? Because mm-hmm. I have a lot of respect for Kevin Durant. I admire Kevin Durant a lot. And Kevin Durant is someone who, uh, you know, we watch grow from a boy to a man. He's always embraced his faith, but he's got a personality and sort of a, it's like, it, it, to, to me, I would like to hear KD, who sometimes can come off to some people as sort of brooding and to himself. I want to hear about how his spirituality drives him. Same. Because everyone else that like, like he's a, a cool dude. Yeah. And a direct guy. Yeah. And a guy that sometimes that's doing so much fantastic work in his community is so accomplished and is so amazing, but sometimes doesn't seem like the most cuddly dude. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, But still filled up with the spirit. Yeah, he is. So I would like to I, I would like to hear how it moves with him, like how it jives with him and like how and his walk with God and his walk with his purpose. Yeah. Uh, especially with with as 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 criticized as what he gets sometimes. So mm-hmm. Kevin Durant would be one. Um I don't know. I don't I don't, I don't know. Any who female? Else, man. Any females? Any females? Uh You can help me out here with my next season roster. And they ha- they have to be believers, right? Well, yes, it would help just for the sake of faith being the compass mm-hmm. that they've Used to navigate through this industry. Right. So yes, everybody that is on season one is a believer, a hundred percent. Females. Let me think. Uh, Maybe we have you. You are a believer. Yeah. I just don't want to. Listen. (laughs) It almost happened on this podcast. I would do it. I I would love to sit down and talk. Obviously, I'm not nearly as accomplished as any of the people you had on the first season, but. 
Like I don't want to. I don't want to cry, man. I, like I, t- I keep telling people, I'm not trying to cry. The only thing that really I can makes get you me, to cry. The only thing that really makes me cry is talking about this because mm. it's such a. It, 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 it's it's been such a placeholder in my life, mm-hmm. and since I've been lo- in Los Angeles, it's been I've tried my best to connect and hold on to it, mm-hmm. but it's it's hard. And these conversations with. With, with people like yourself, they, they always bring it out, man. We, man, hold on to it and seek it mm-hmm. and use it. He's chasing you. You like Hillsong? Love it. Great community, great church. So happy that they were the platform that I was able to use and partner for the show because they saw the need and they understand the need of purposeful content. Mm. Misconceptions about Hillsong. You hear them? You don't? No. You don't hear him. You do? Of course. What? I don't. Uh, like, um, <coughs> shout out to Pastor Carl. He's a friend of mine. So for a long time, him and I would talk about this. You know Carl Lentz? Yeah. He's a great guy. Mm-hmm. Um, but we would, uh, you know, some people like around here when Justin first started going to Hillsong a lot and stuff mm-hmm. like that, they would think that it was like some kind of. What is that? This is like 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 it was some kind of cut off family of people that like were no. controlling his brain or something like that. Really? That's what they would say. You not guys don't you guys don't hear that? No. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. It's a church. A church. Everybody has has to go somewhere, mm-hmm. regardless of the amount of fame or success. Someone needs a home. Yeah. You and like, that's their home. Church is better on Wednesday or Sunday. Every day for me. Wednesday's better. Why? Wednesday was always my favorite time to go to church. Wednesday was like Bible study for me, and then Sunday was church. Wednesday, Wednesday was Bible study, and it was choir, and they would be in there singing. Ooh, that worship. They would be in there singing, and they were worshiping, and they were singing, but they were also... Like they were also like in the middle of working things out, and sometimes somebody would really catch it. And yeah, it would just be, and it wouldn't be a ton of people in there. It it's amazing, right? It's yeah. like you could just see the pain lifting off of us when we worship. Mm-hmm. Where do you go to church? Right now? Where did you go? When I was there, mm-hmm. I went to several different churches. I used to go to my um, my great grandfather, uh, God rest in peace, Reverend QT Ellis, had several different churches, include, including the New York Baptist Church. I went to Shiloh Baptist Church, but I also went to Bethany World Prayer Center, Larry Stockstill. Uh, a, a bunch of different places down there. Though. Well, you're oh, always welcome. Ooh, ooh. gotta shout out my boys. Faith Family Christian Academy, Family Christian Assembly. Uh, Jimmy Swaggart. Where's that? That's in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Now okay. I know you guys are gonna remember when Pastor Swaggart, Reverend Swaggart, got involved in all of that stuff in the late '80s. Forget about that. He, you know, repented. Uh, but that was a place where. It was loving and beautiful and really a great community. And when mm. I was a kid, going to play basketball and do stuff like that, that's where I would go. Got it. Where do y'all have church here in, um, in uh, Hillsong in L.A.? Where Downtown. Downtown. Let where? me know whenever you want to come off of Hill Street. Okay. 10, 12, 6, and 8. And you can meet my fine husband. Man, <laughs> man, look, nah, I'm not coming, man. Because, man, I, I'm not coming, man. Because You would love is, him. I'm sure I would, Ooh, man. you would like, love like, him. Listen, I need some church with some homely people. Some who? Some homely people. Where How the, is he not homely? No, I'm not. I'm saying some ugly people. Where the ugly oh church Oh, my at? gosh. I cannot. I, I need a church. Stop it. Uh, like, where, there's got to be a church where Stop some ugly it. people. Stop it. Stop You said it. come as you are. That yeah. means if you're ugly, you can come too. You come as you are. Right. So come on, come on Sunday. Come to Hillsong. Nah, man. Y'all got... Come on. Nah, y'all got Haley Baldwin and that dude. And that, oh, man. my that's God. Not, and gonna Brian me, Lee. And Brian... Yeah, yeah. That's going to make me feel Brian, <laughs> Brian Lee, Justin Bieber. <laughs> like, I can't I can't go to this church. Maddie, we need a church where regular looking people can go and feel... You're tripping. Don't, don't you think that? I know you're joking. Maddie's like, what are you talking about? I'm not regular looking. Look at Maddie's me. coming with. Yeah. All right, listen, I want to tell you something. Yeah. Um, first of all, I didn't know that Jeremiah was your dad. <laughs> Are you tripping out? <laughs> I didn't oh, know. my God. I, I didn't know. You didn't do your research. I didn't. Well, that's the, look, I did the research, but I did the World Series champion in 1997. Florida um, Marlins. Florida Marlins. I, did, I, did I didn't know that was your dad. By the way, as much as I've... Is your brother Jerry Manuel Jr.? Jerry Lorenzo Manuel Jr., Tripping, you're done. Fired. By the way, as much as I know about him, I never knew that either. By the way, fired. Never fired. Never knew it. Well, because he takes his middle name as his like mm-hmm. you know stage Man. name, if you will. What's the most favorite baseball player you ever met? 
Albert Bell from the Chicago White Sox. Oh, you don't think Heart I know who of Gold. that is? You don't think I know who that is? I don't know. That, you... that dude played at Louisiana State University. Oh. That dude played at LSU in Baton Rouge, where I'm from. Baton Rouge versus everybody. Shout out, he was Joey Bell then. Albert Bell. Albert Bell. Great guy, because he was misunderstood as well. Exactly. Great guy. And obviously, I was younger, but growing up. Look, Larry. Jerry. J no, it's a J. It's a J. Oh, <laughs> <gasps> wow, how dare you curse in front of Natalie Jerry Manuel Jr. <laughs> like, That's him. You can't see it? I mean, I can see it, but I mean, the reality is, I mean, he looked different when he was managing, though. I love the fact that they used to wear the chains. And yeah, like, swag. Oh, That's different. where we got all of our swag from, uh, from our mom and dad. Mm. Fire. It is fire. Um, I want you to be encouraged. I want to. I want you uh, to know that um, people are, are 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 starving and drowning out here, man. Mm. And these conversations about faith mm. and about the accessibility of of spirituality and about uh, the cosmic eternal reasons to be good, to do good, and to worship and to fellowship are conversations that we're not really having. Mm. And are conversations that. Um, I think people are sometimes afraid to have. Like I yeah. just told you, sometimes I'm even afraid to have. Yeah. Like I, I'll sit here and talk about God to someone who's an atheist for an hour and a half, but when it comes to talking about someone to it with someone who is uh, a believer and a worker on behalf of Christ, I sometimes feel lacking. Mm. Um, and so I, I, I appreciate you guys coming by, but I also, in a first on the Red Pill podcast. Maddie, you can't tell me what I can do on a podcast before you leave. I would like you to pray with me. If that's okay. Well, well, well. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. All right. Are you ready for this? You're going to lead the prayer. Are you going to finish it? How do I finish it? You're just going to finish it. You know how to pray. Don't act like you don't know how to pray. I know, but like I don't I think you should do the whole prayer. No, no, but, you like, can finish it. Okay. All right. Go for it. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord God. We thank you for this moment in time. We thank you for this time to exalt your name, Lord God. There's only one name that is above every name, Father God, and that is your name, Jesus, Lord God. We just pray right now for anybody out there that is dealing with mental health, that is dealing with inadequacy, that is dealing with lack of anything, Lord God. And I pray that they continue to put their hope and their faith and their joy and their completeness and their wholeness in you, Lord God. I pray that you just saturate them with your love, saturate them with your peace, saturate them with your joy, Father God. We bind any plans of the enemy that may go over, um, over any of the listeners, over any of the viewers, over Van and myself and his family, my family, Father God. Protect us with your blood, protect us with your peace, encounter us. Um, we just ask for your holy presence to encounter each and every one of us, Father God, and direct us into your presence, direct us into your peace, direct us into um, our purpose and our um, identity in you, Father God. I pray that you give every listener and viewer an awakening of their identity and their purpose in and through you, Lord God. Uh, God, I ask that the grace, power, and passion of your word and message uh, pass over everyone. I ask for healing for our culture, for our nation, for yes, our God. world. Yes, um, God. I ask that anyone that is broken be made whole through you. Yeah. Um, for my people back in Louisiana, I ask that you continue to watch over them in my absence. I ask for health for my father, for strength yeah. for my mother, and for serenity uh, for my sister. Yeah. Uh, and in, in my future with my family yeah. and my wife and my children, God, I ask that I can be a good husband one yeah. day and a good father one day and a, at some point, a vessel and yes. a voice yes. for your word. Yes, God. Amen. Yes. Amen. So good. There you go. Ooh. Maddie. Well, look at that. Man, look at that. We prayed, guys. Ooh. Look, I didn't cry, mama. I told you this was going to be a hard one. Um, so I'm going to go to the Ugly People's Church. You can see uh, <laughs> Natalie at Hillsong. I'm going to find a church probably like, I don't know. Soon. This week. You're coming. This Come on. Week? Come on. Like what's, like what's going on this week? Y'all got... 10 and 12. Our pastor Sam Lopez is preaching. Y'all got one snacks? Of the, one of the pastors. I'll bring snacks. 
Y'all okay. ain't got no snacks at Hillsong? I Hill will song? bring snacks. All these celebrities <laughs> going to the church and y'all ain't got no snacks? Oh, he's back at it. He's y'all, back all these at celebrities it. I will with... bring snacks. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to send Nat- Natalie a list, list of snacks. You guys, uh, plug, the, uh, plug your show one more time. Hillsong Channel. And mm-hmm. every Sunday night at 7.30 p.m. Pacific. If you've missed it, go to hillsongchannel.com backslash Natalie to see the episodes. And if you want to watch old videos of the White Sox, that's on MLB TV. <laughs> you can see her dad doing his thing. Yes. That's it. We out. All right. Thank you, Natalie. I am happy that the spirit touched me and even happier that I did not cry. I, I, sometimes I cry when I'm getting all into it with the Lord. I don't know why, man. I got some issues. Uh, but yeah, we talked about it earlier. When you're listening to this or watching this, you might be doing it on a platform uh, at your own home when you're trying to sit down and you don't want to have to reach over for a different remote to turn it up and then turn the channel back to whatever you were watching. Hopefully you weren't watching nothing you weren't supposed to be watching. That's what you were just talking about the Lord. You can clean up that remote control clutter with Control Center by Cavo. Plug in your streamer, sound system, cable, satellite, or game console and control everything connected to your TV with one easy-to-use voice control remote. Shop now and get 40% off Control Center with promo code PILL. That's P-I-L-L. That's $59.99, 40% off, regular pricing of $99.95. You're almost getting this joint for half off, man. That's what I call a D-E-A-L deal. Service plan is required. First 45 days are free. Control Center is available at caavo.com and at Best Buy. Control Center by Cavo, one remote that does it all.